Hello and welcome to this section of the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to continue learning and getting practice with finding these oxidation numbers in compounds. Uh, not much more to say about it other than practice makes perfect and seeing lots of different examples and working them yourself is really the way to get good at it. So let's just dive right into a very interesting example that's going to illustrate something for you. Um, Fe2O4. All right. So let's go ahead and find the oxidation numbers of everything here. Uh, so the very first thing we always have is rule number one, which means there's no charge on this guy. This is neutral. So the sum of the oxidation numbers is going to be equal to zero. All right. And then we go off and look at the other rules that we have. So we have, do we have any group 1A or 2A metals? No, we don't. We have iron. Uh, this is fluorine. So this is not Fe. So we don't have any fluorines. We don't have any hydrogens. Uh, but we do have some oxygens, and those have an oxidation number of negative 2. So what we'll have is the O uh, is going to be equal to negative 2, and that's rule 5. And of course, the top one's rule 1. And since we have one of these oxidation numbers, and we know what the sum of them must be equal to, we don't even need to look at this list anymore, because we have enough information to find the answer. Now one thing I'm noticing right now, everything is correct, but when I wrote my problem down, this is really supposed to be Fe3O4. So it doesn't really change anything. The sum of the oxidation numbers is still zero, and the oxidation number on the, on the oxygen is still negative two. But we don't need to look any further in our list, because now that we know the oxygen answer, and we know what the sum of these things have to be zero, then we know enough to actually solve the problem. So let's use our math. Three times iron, 3Fe, plus 4 times the oxidation number here, which is negative 2, has got to be equal 0. So we've used both of those rules there. So we have 3 times the iron minus 8 is equal to 0. And we move the 8 to the other side, so we'll have 3Fe is equal to 8. And when we divide by the 3, what we'll have is Fe is 8 over 3. So look at this for a second and scratch your head. 8 over 3. It's not a whole number. It's a fraction, right? So how can that be? Does that make sense? Okay. And this is what I'm trying to say. Sometimes the oxidation numbers you get aren't going to make sense sometimes. And we've already seen that with other problems. We get an oxidation number, you know, like positive 7 for chlorine or something, and then we look and we're like, how can that be? Well, this is a bookkeeping method. It's a consistent set of rules that we use to assign numbers and see how these oxidation numbers change. All right. If you get a fraction, it, 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 it's perfectly valid in the context of what we're doing. It's a bookkeeping method. What we're really going to do is if this was in a reaction, we would look and see what the oxidation number of, of iron was on the other side, of the yield side. And if it was also 8 over 3, then we would say there's no change in oxidation number, um, so there's no oxidation or reduction happening to iron. And if it went up or if it went down, then that would tell us if iron was being oxidized or if it was being reduced. All right? But the fact that you get a fraction shouldn't scare you by itself. Just make sure that your math is correct. So the way that you would write this down is Fe3O4. And the oxidation number for iron is 8 thirds. And the oxidation number for oxygen is negative 2. And that's what you would circle on your test. Now that we have the answer, and I've told you, don't be scared off by the answer, I want to explain a little bit why in this particular case we got the answer of 8 thirds. It's very interesting for you to know. So even though we write the compound as Fe3O4, in actuality, the way it really is, 